Okie dokie, Photometer. Um, I've got to say my initials in, uh, initial impressions of Photometer. Photometer. Uh, I am I'm quite impressed. I like it. It's got some nice editing tools. Um, um, it runs in two modes. Uh, now, Apple have bought this product um, and will continue further development of it. And uh, it runs in two modes. You can either point it at your Apple Photos album uh, that when you automatically uh, import from an iPhone, etc. Or you can um, uh, use it in file mode where you tell it which folders to look at. And as you can see, um, I've done it with the uh, in file mode and I've imported the same set of images that I used in the on one uh on one photo raw test so i've got these images in here and um it's pretty good uh it has some weaknesses when you run it in, i don't know if it can benefit from apple uh if you do it in photos mode like this and create some smart albums that can look for um that can look for files you can create albums here when you're in photos mode but when you're in files mode, that opportunity uh, to create albums, that seems to go away. Um, I can't figure out how to do that or create smart albums. Now, smart albums is the one where it would go and look at the EXIF data and look at the camera, the lens, the focal length and things like that. So it doesn't look like it's got that. If you know of any way to do that, let me know in the comments. Uh, but you can flag and you can star them. Uh, flagging is uh, seems to have replaced, uh, you know, creating a favourite and a heart like that. So I can do this and I can click on that and it's flagged. And then later I can filter out and say, just show me all my flagged images like this. And you got your flagged images there. Switch that off again. You go back. And then you can create star ratings. You can use the numeric keys on your keyboard to, I'll give this a five. I just press five and you can see it's got five stars now. Um, if we go in this one, the one area where it does seem to excel, this is edit mode by the way now. And um, if it's confusing you the way it looks, it's because I've switched to light mode. I prefer light mode. Uh, as the dark mode, I'll just show you what it looks like. Go into settings here. And this is the traditional dark mode for this app, but I prefer light mode. Uh, now, this image here, we've got some useful tools up here. You can do some uh, machine learning enhancements. Uh, we'll try that immediately. It just brightens everything up. Looks pretty good. Um, what else could we do? We'll go in and straighten it. We've got an auto straighten here. We'll click on that and it straightens up that tower. Uh, so that looks okay. Uh, we'll say going to the uh, the uh, adjustments here. Now these are your regular adjustments, but it does have some quite powerful support for layers and masks. And uh, these down here, in case you're wondering, these are presets. And these letters, um, if you click on that, right click on one of them, you can say show collection description. And the UR is urban, created for urban photography. So that would be suitable for some of these, I guess. So, and then you can click on the various ones under urban. There's that one, and there's that one, and there's that one, and there's that one. And they're okay, but I don't quite like some of these colours it's coming up with. It looks like it's a, a big storm. It was actually a sunny day there. So I am going to... It doesn't have a history stack. That's a shame. Uh, so I'm going to have to hit Command Z several times. Or I could just go back and revert to original. But then I lose the, uh, the straightening. So I'm just going to go back and do the auto straighten again there. Like that. Get that up. And then we're going to go to adjustments here. And uh, I'm going to brighten the whole thing by bringing the exposure up like that. I want this guy nice and clear and visible without blowing out the sky. And then we're going to go back and adjust the sky by using some, um, some uh, layers and marks. Okay, so bring the, uh, the highlights up a wee bit and shadows up there. 
and uh, make sure that we're not crushing the blacks down here so we'll bring that black point away from that edge bring the contrast up a little bit like that and overall brightness like this we're getting somewhere clarity how is that going to affect this image uh, it seems to be just overly enhancing the contrast we'll leave that alone for now Con texture that's all right texture's okay there uh, but shadows up a bit more all right so i'm happy with this guy and the tower we've got a couple of marks on the tower let's check out the healing tools we've got a clone tool here i believe clone tool got a healing tool the repair tool it's called so the brush size wow that's huge so we're going to bring that brush size down a wee bit see if i can just cover that maybe too big and uh, zoom in a little bit I want those white marks off that tower there and then cover that and boom gone lovely nice simple healing tool nice and one more time there and that one don't want to leave any horrible weird digital artifacts like that nice oh that's quite nice okay back to editing now and then we're going to add a layer and we're going to select the sky this is quite cool in this app and uh hitting on a mac keyboard control and c i think it is control c gives you a split screen so you can do a before and after type thing and zoom out a bit like that you can see it's, it's done a lot so far and that image is looking a lot better so i kind of like that and then control and C again, get rid of that. Zoom back in. There, we got our dude sat down here looking good. Then we're going to go and select the sky now and add a bit of drama. We're going to hit this plus here on this layer thing. And we're going to say select sky. And it will do a good job of selecting the sky. It has, it's missed a bit up here. I want that. And so you can go on this and you can say add a brush. So I'm going to go in and just, oh, that's a bit. I've got a brush size opacity to get that down a bit. And just brush in the sky there where it missed a little bit. Like that. There. So now we've got a mask on the sky. And... Uh, now we can go and do some exposure treatment and color treatment that will only apply to the sky. Oh, well, we've got that. So we could uh, drag the hue up in a different direction. A little bit of purple coming on there. No, too much, too much, too much, too much. There. Towards a bit of teal maybe, like that. Increase the saturation and the vibrance and we'll bring up the exposure just a wee bit on the sky brighten it up like that and we will say done and we are reminded that we are on a trial here get out of that and yeah that is pretty good um so yeah that's not bad really uh go back to the raw layer there yeah, so it's pretty powerful tools. I like that you can easily select skies and subjects and then add a combination to brush in parts that it might have missed. So powerful editing tools. Um, what it doesn't have, I've uh, investigated this, so it doesn't have any dedicated dehazing and it doesn't have any dedicated um, uh, lens corrections. If I go back to one of my favorites here, I'm just going to discard these changes. Get back to the Aarhus one in the train station scene here. Well, look at this. Now, if we zoom in on the windows up here, because of the super high contrast and the way the lens works, uh, we'll just well just straighten things up. Auto straighten like that. Boom. There you go. Uh, so we, that's okay. And then I'll just hit enter to confirm that. Now looking at that we're getting a lot of heavy purple fringing as you would expect with this type of image now if this had 
lens corrections and it recognized the uh, the type of lens the recall was, then it would probably uh, instantly get rid of some of this purple fringing. Uh, but it doesn't. Uh, so that's a shame that it doesn't do that. I'm sure there are some other tools that might be able to reduce it in the standard edits, uh, but I'm not sure what they would be. Um, yeah, so that would be cool if it had that. Uh, some lens corrections and dehazing, um, but it doesn't. So, yeah. But on the whole, nice, but I think it's missing the ability to search through the catalog of files for various types of camera, um, uh, f-stops and all sorts of stuff like that that you can do with dark table and on one photo raw and Lightroom where you can create these uh, smart filters that will look at aspects of the camera and the lens you were using at the time. Um, but other than that, yeah, it's pretty good. It will probably have similar, uh, uh, okay, you can't export, oh, you probably need a photo. Let's see, I wanna export this. This is an important one as well. Export it. Won't let me while I'm on the trial, I don't think. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But I'm guessing it will definitely let me export to um, a 16-bit TIFF. Um, yeah, so I, I like it. Nice product. Um, it's got the Apple design cues. So it looks very Apple-esque. It looks like something could Apple could have made. And it looks good. Um, not quite enough file browsing utilities and search and filter functions for my taste now. I've uh, become uh, uh, quite happy about having those uh, possibilities to search, for example, the 40mm Sony lens or, me, or the Ricoh GX, uh, G, uh, GR3X files, uh, especially when I get my start putting my old catalogs back onto this um, external disk. Uh, there's a huge jumble of files. Some folders are a little mixed up as well. So having that ability to really search with that fine granular search uh, and, and filter, uh, that would be really cool to have that. Um, but yeah, very nice layer tools, very nice, very nice masking tools. Um, all the edits that you would expect except lens corrections and no um, no obvious dehazing although I'm sure you could probably uh, get around that there will be a workaround for dehazing but yeah I would give this uh, if I had to give this a score I would probably give Photometer something like uh, a 7 out of 10 but um yeah, on one photo roll would still be a, an 8 or a 9 out of 10. And uh, still the strongest competitor for, for Lightroom, for me at, at least, because of the price as well. The price of uh, this one, let's just get that up in my country. Uh, this is including sales tax. You would have to pay $39 a year. Or there is a one-off payment option of 157 I won't be doing that because I don't know. It, Apple's had this product on their books now since November 2024. There's a new uh, a new Mac OS coming out in um, in uh, October this year, 2025. There will be a new uh, Mac OS to replace the one I'm using, and I suspect they will be hard at work making the Apple-esque changes to Photometer and uh, introducing some new features, probably some AI as well. And uh, yeah, it'll be exciting to see what happens in future, but I won't bother making a one-time payment or a $39 payment uh, right now, especially when you can buy on one photo raw outright for $40. And uh, yeah, uh, so what's next, what's next? I think I will have a look at Skylum Luminar Neo next. This is supposed to be good and incorporate um, some uh, some AI features in this one. 
but does it have the goods? Does it have the ability to do all the other stuff like uh, management, lens corrections, dehazing, and all that stuff I like? Okay, catch you in the next one. That was Photometer. Very, very nice app. A very nice clean interface. Um, powerful uh, masking and layering tools. Um, so so on the file management. That's it. That's my verdict. It's in a second or third place, I would say. So, cheers. Bye for now.